Welcome back to this uh, second uh, lesson. Uh, it's been a while since the first one, but um, uh, we're going to kick off immediately the second lesson, starting with uh, some basic knowledge about Python. So we will park for a bit uh, the geometry part of, Py of Dynamo, uh, and we will start to introduce uh, Python. So we will be back soon uh, in the geometry side to, uh, to drive some crazy geometry using using directly Python uh, instead of using some uh, the, the basic nodes from the library. Uh, before starting, uh, we just need to download probably um, a notepad, uh, so something we can use to write the code. Uh, there are a couple of options there, but uh, the, the most used one are notepad++, which is actually just a notepad with uh, some, some more functionalities. Uh, the other one is the Visual Studio Code. Uh, both of them are pretty good. Uh, for, the, um, for this course, I'm going to use just Notepad, but if you, uh, you feel free to use Visual Studio Code, which has already some extensions for, um, for Python as well. So you can have uh, uh, some highlight codes uh, while you're writing, uh, which is pretty handy. Uh, the notepad as well has the same functionalities, so just choose the one you, you, you prefer. Uh, I've already downloaded Notepad++, and that's the interface. Uh, I'm going to use Notepad just because I can zoom in and zoom out uh, the code, so you will be able to read it um, better compared to what you can see in the, in the Dynamo itself. So if you wanna if you wanna highlight some uh, specific language type, you can go under the language and you can choose the language you want. You can do C, C++, C Sharp, or uh, Visual Basic. Um, there are lots of them, um, and uh, the one we are using is actually, of course, Python. Um, when you create a new file and you save it. Uh, it's going uh, as a as a as a PI uh, is directly going to be um, highlighted as a, as a Python. So it's pretty it's pretty uh, it's pretty clever uh, and is able to understand which uh, which is the language you are using for uh, for the scripting. Um, so this script you are looking now uh, is actually a template. Uh, we will reach this template by the end of this, uh, well, not by the end, probably in a in couple of lessons. Um, and this is actually the basic structures I'm always using when I want to use Dynamo um, and Python to access the Revit API. So we're not going to use all of them immediately, uh, but keep in mind that this is more or less the structure we're going to reach um, during this course. So there are some declaration sections where we import all the libraries. We will uh, try to explain all of them uh, and what, uh, what they are used for. Uh, there's uh, uh, the, um, how to access the active document in Revit. Uh, then um, I will explain what uh, is a transaction and why and when we need to set up a transaction to access um, the Revit APIs and the Revit core. Uh, then, of course, some uh, inputs and output uh, that are uh, used by uh, the specific Python code. Um, again, we, we're not going to use now all of them. We will just use some of them, uh, but you will understand um, for... Uh, each one, what is the real purpose of the of the specific library? So let's um, kick up uh, Revit 2019 and Dynamo 2.1. Um, as we can see, um, I I will start with a blank one. Uh, if we want to access the scripting side of Dynamo, uh, we can go under the library and open the script and under the um, oh, sorry, we're going to go on there. Oh, it's that Python here, which is easier. Uh, so it's under the editor and it's under Python script. And um, the, so the node is pretty, is pretty easy. It comes with uh, one input and an output. So the input can be variable. So the number of input can be variable. And is actually an array of inputs. I will definitely explain what is an array. 
so we can add or remove the number of inputs from here. We don't have um, the same uh, functionality from uh, for the output, uh, but we will understand how to uh, output an array of elements and then select the elements from the from the only output that we can get. Um, compared to Grasshopper, where we can uh, also decide the number of output, this is um, slightly different. But you will see, it's not it's not a big deal to manage uh, how to get different output from the same node. So for now, let's keep it uh, as it is. And uh, to access, uh, let's move to the manual. Uh, to get access to the uh, to the Python script, actually, uh, we just need to um, right click on the node and go under edit. So I will start to uh, copy the code from here into the notepad uh, because it's going to be easier for us just to have a quick look. Uh, so what's control C? Uh, Wait, control C. And control V, and it doesn't work. So let me see why it's not working. Control C. Ah, it's my keyboard that is not acting. Doesn't matter. I will I will type it again. Uh, so let's start with um, import CLR. We can actually get it from here. Control C, Control V, oh, it's working perfectly from here. Uh, so Python, let's choose Python. As you can see, immediately when we change the uh, the language, uh, it's immediately starting to understand the type of uh, the type of language and the syntax of the language. Uh, there's actually a way from the settings to change the color uh, for the uh, for the editing. Um, if we go under um, file no, it's probably under file. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Oh yeah, style configurator should be yeah. Uh, so you can choose the default one, which is uh, which is uh, um, white uh, white background. Uh, I usually prefer to have the uh, the dark one, which is which has more contrast actually, so it's uh, it's easier to uh, to read it. Uh, you can go here and just tweak as much as you want uh, your style, with foreground and background based on the uh, on the language, or you can just apply um, a global style if you need it. So the import CLR is basically always the first um, the first line of code we're going to use uh, in in python uh, so let me explain what is uh, clr i already tried to search it on if you google it uh, so python actually exists in different versions but the main one is a, is a, for uh, for a c environment so it's based on uh, on a c uh, it's called c python and uh, uh, to be able to use Python in a, in a Windows environment, uh, actually what is called .NET environment, uh, we're going to use a common language runtime. So the common language runtime provides uh, scripting tools for .NET developers. So if you want to develop uh, on a Windows environment, you need to use this common language uh, runtime library, which will provide you some basic functionalities. Uh, just to be more uh, more clear, uh, there are different, as I said, different versions of Python. The one we are using, especially if you want to uh, use Python uh, in um, in a Windows environment, is um, is Iron Python. So you can see it here, Iron Python. Uh, which actually is um, uh, rem uh, reminds you to uh, this um, website, and Python Iron Python is actually the Python programming language for that .NET framework, which is the framework used by the Windows operating systems to uh, to manage the operating system. Actually, so there are some limitations. 
uh, if you are mm, more familiar with Python, you will know that there are uh, thousands of uh, different libraries, uh, some of them really, uh, really, really common, like uh, libraries for, uh, for example, for data scientists like NumPy or Pandas or um, some of these um, very common libraries for, uh, uh, for machine learning like TensorFlow or uh, other very uh, interesting library. Well, if you use Iron Python, most of these libraries are not compiled for Iron Python. So that means you can't really use this library uh, inside Dynamo because Dynamo is based on Iron Python. So the way I usually do that, the, uh, there are some uh, projects around the, around the web where people are trying to do porting of these uh, libraries into Iron Python, but I never saw uh, actually some uh, really good result about that. So the, the actual idea is that if you want to use these uh, specific libraries, you have to try to export the data using Dynamo or um, uh, Python within Dynamo, and then manage this data outside with another version of Python that you can uh, easily install manually from the Python website, or you can use other uh, platforms like Anaconda, which comes already with, uh, with lots of libraries. I'm not going to focus on this now. Uh, if you need more information, you can just, um, you can just ask me uh, about more information, but it's pretty, it's pretty easy uh, if you Google it. Um, and you Google Anaconda Python, uh, you will immediately uh, jump into the website and download um, the distribution of Anaconda based on the Python version you want to use, the operating system you want to use, and this is coming already with lots of library, uh, like someone I, uh, I just mentioned, like Pandas, NumPy, or TensorFlow for, uh, for deep learning. So again, I'm not going to focus on this one. The, our, um, our main goal is to try to understand Iron Python and how to use it. The good news is that um, uh, the basic structure of a script uh, is still with the Python syntax. So whatever we learn in uh, Iron Python is going to be the same if you use a C Python installation. So let's go back to, uh, to our code. So the, the CLR um, is, is probably uh, the most common one when it comes to use Iron Python. And we need this import CLR because this CLR provides us with another important um, functionalities, which is other references. So the way Python works in the .NET environment is that we need to reference some library used by, uh, for example, in this case, Dynamo. So the protogeometry is a library used by Dynamo to access and to manage geometry. It's actually oops, the only way we access whatever is under this geometry uh, side of the library. So if we want to replicate any of this uh, of this node, we can do it using design script. And if we want to use it within the Dynamo environment, within the Python environment, we need to reference this library. So this common um, sentence uh, is always part of a script because we always need to deal with, uh, uh, with geometries. Um, so I, I, I don't want to go deep into uh, explain how Python works uh, some some because otherwise I'm gonna spend probably just uh, 10 lessons only to uh, to explain how Python works so I will definitely recommend you to go and have a small basic um, Python uh, course there are a couple of them on Coursera or Udemy uh, pretty cheap if you want to have the real basics uh, I will jump and try to explain some basics while I'm explaining uh, what we exactly need, uh, but I'm not going to focus on each and single statement in the uh, in the Python script. Otherwise, uh, again, it's going to take too much time, and we will lose the focus of what this course is for. Uh, 
so the add reference, um, we will use a lot the add reference also in other uh, instances. Uh, if we check again the, the template, we use uh, the add reference to add the protogeometry. Uh, then we will use the same to import the Revit API UI library and the Revit API library, which are the main two libraries used to access the Revit API. One access the elements within the project, the other one access the UI of the uh, or Revit itself. Uh, so as you can see, we use a lot of these add references. And after we reference a DLL, we usually import some functionalities or all the functionalities from that specific library. So if we use the statement from the name of the library and then import and then we use this star symbol means we want to import everything so you can read it on the from from the end of the statement to the um, to the beginning so we want to import everything from the autodesk design script geometry which actually is part of this proto geometry so the same is about the Revit UI or the Revit um, API. We want to import everything from the Revit UI and we want to import everything from the Revit database or the Revit creation. We, we will focus on this later. Anyway, just to try to explain that uh, the from import statement is used to import some specific functionalities or all the functionalities from a referenced library. It's going to be the same if the library is not a DLL or is, for example, another Python library, but <clears throat> the, the idea is always the same. So we can import uh, specific libraries or specific functionalities and then we can or we can decide to import all of them. So if we go back to the Python script, um, after we import the CLR, we can use the CLR add reference function to import the proto geometry library and then use the from import from the uh, Autodesk geometry design script geometry to import all the functionalities. The next step is to define the inputs. Uh, I usually remove this line of the code because uh, we don't really need it. Uh, and the last bit is to define the output. So if we keep the, um, the node as it is and we save it and we run it, as you can see, the result is definitely zero because we define the output as zero. But if we start to define, for example, the first input, which is again defined as an array. I will explain immediately what is an array. And we define that this input, uh, sorry, we define that the output is equal to the input. So we define something like this. And to do that, we need to use the both capital letters for out and in and define zero as the first input and we save it. If we run this, immediately the result will be null because we don't have actually um, a connection or we don't have any node that goes into the input. But for example, let's see, we use a number slider and we connect this into the Python script then we run and immediately the result will be one so if we go into automatic as soon as we change the number slider this will be this will flow through the uh, python script and go into the output same <clears throat> if we try to connect more than one we actually see only one output just because inside the script we define that is just equal to one of the inputs but if we use a comma and we define the second one for example then we will see that 
we have two outputs and in this case the input is connected to both the um, the number is connected to both input at the same time so we will have two output at the same time if we want to extract then a specific output from the list of outputs we can just use a list get item at index and then define the index we want to extract and then this one will give us the final result so just to make a bit different the two things uh, let's multiply this or let's add some number here plus two for example save it so this one will be plus two and we we can see that this one is using only the output zero and this one now is using the output one so very basic things uh, let me remove this one now we don't want to do just easy stuff let's disconnect this now and let's go back to the manual one so going back to the script uh, this is actually really uh, the easy bit uh, of having something um, let's try to have um, uh, a small introduction of the type of inputs we can have so as we said we can have uh, uh, we can uh, address the input number zero using just this notation this syntax in zero so let me go back to the notepad because it's easier so import clr clr add reference and we don't really need to do it but let's say proto g omega okay so I will share this one with you guys. Um, so let me just copy this. It's pretty easy. Yeah. So and then we said we need out is equal to something. For now, it can be just zero. So in between these two, we have uh, our input, and this input can be of different types. So we can have different types like, uh, uh, oops, I'm trying to find the hash, it doesn't matter. Let's do it this way. So we can have different types. One is the string type. The other one is, uh, oops. Is it she okay the other one is the float then we can have uh, an integer and then we can basically have uh, what is called an array or we can have a dictionary which is a more complex thing we will see it later so how is a string defined a string is actually just defined as a as a bunch of characters uh, the most common one hello world and we can define the string using the oops we can define the string using the two um, in this way, or we can define using this up, up one. So it doesn't really matter uh, for, for Python the way we uh, define it. Uh, I usually define this, um, uh, I don't remember the English one uh, to, uh, to define this, uh, this specific character, uh, but to, to define more complex strings, you, you definitely need to use um, this syntax instead, the one with the single, um, the single um, 
I don't remember the name, sorry for that. Uh, so uh, the float is actually a real number, so it's defined by um, a number and decimal numbers. The integer is, of course, a number without any decimal number. Array can be defined as an array of uh, numbers, or can be defined as an array of strings. In this way, so we can define it hello and then word, or can be defined as a mix of them. So can be defined by a number as a float, can be defined by an integer, and then can be can contain a string or can even contain um, a dictionary itself. A dictionary, as I said, is a, is a more complex element and is usually defined by two elements. Uh, the first one is the key and the second one is the value. So um, I will come back to dictionaries um, a bit later uh, because they are pretty handy, uh, especially when we need to manage um, lots of data and these data are, um, are um, combined by uh, different types. So we will use dictionaries a lot later and there are um, um, some basic functionalities already within Dynamo to manage, uh, to manage dictionaries, uh, specifically, of course, starting from uh, Dynamo 2.0, which is based on a JSON structure, and, uh, um, and so is based on dictionaries, definitely. Uh, so going back here, uh, let's, um, mm, I can imagine that strings and uh, floats and integers are pretty, uh, pretty easy. Uh, I just want to um, highlight that uh, something about um, um, about the arrays. Remember always that arrays are um, each element within an array is identified using an index. So the first element in an array is the an index zero element. So and the second one so is one and so so far so forth so this is really important because if we want to address the first element of an array we need to select the element with index zero so if we want to select the second element then this one would be um, the element of index one and so on that's why if we go back to the uh, to our script the first element in the index uh, of inputs is with index zero, and the second one is index one, and um, and so far so. So let's try to do some uh, some magic stuff already. Um, when we define uh, when we want to use some um, some inputs, uh, we need to define some container for this uh, uh, for this element. They are they are usually called variables and um, they can have different names. Um, the basic syntax is that um, we can't use numbers as a starting letter of character for a name. So we can't really call a variable like to something because this one will generate an error in, in our script. So let's try to save this one. And run. So, as you can see, the warning says that the Iron Python evaluator um, failed on the operation, and the uh, and it failed because there's an, an unexpected token called something. Uh, this is because the something. Uh, let's try to say equal to zero. This something is actually starting with a number and is not expecting a number as a first letter. 
but if we remove the number two and we save it and we run this one then the script will work perfectly we can actually say that uh, out is equal to something and then if we save it it's still zero because something is equal to zero but if something is equal to in of zero then is null because we don't have anything connected to this input but as soon as, as we connect this number slider this something becomes 53 but i can show you that if we remove this one and we use a string as an input and we type a low word and we connect this to input zero, then the output will be a low word. So this is one of the very interesting thing about Python. Python is able to, um, uh, the, what is called cast a variable based on the type of input, based on the type of um, definition of this, uh, of this variable. So, because we are using as an input a string, Python is able to understand that something is equal to a string, then the output will be equal to a string. But if we connect another thing to in and we run it, then this will understand that it's a float number and then this something becomes immediately a float number and the output which is equal to something becomes a float number so python has a functionality to cast uh, automatically the type of uh, of element of course if we add one more input and we connect this into in one and we say this is something else in this way this will cause an error so remember never use spaces what we use is actually uh, is usually called the uh, camel uh, syntax where the first letter is always not capital and then each different sentence is starting with a capital letter so something else something is not capital else start with E capital and then this one is equal to one and then we can say that this one is equal to both of them with else so we have 53 and hello world immediately so the output is already becoming an array of elements where the first one is a float and the second one is a, um, is a string but if we try to do some operation now for example trying to add these two elements of course this will generate an error because we can't really uh, create a sum between a float and a string what we can do is for example, to convert this one into a string. But I will definitely um, explain better these things later. So we can change the cast of a string of an element doing a type casting uh, in a different way. I will explain this a bit later. Oops. My keyboard is really not working. Fine, so if we want to do some uh, magic sum, we can do it. We just need to sum the proper one. And then we can type this one directly here if we need it. Or we can do that in another sum something is equal to something plus something else 
and then this one will be some something that is probably some type mistake so it's pretty handy sometimes to have these uh, warnings that will help you to understand not always to understand where this uh, uh, where this element will fail so let's see now how we can replicate a node using the python environment so let's remove this one for now and let's use an x y z by coordinates so if we run this uh, uh, this node uh, we pretty much know exactly how this works so this one will create a point using three inputs and uh, the x y and z but how we can create the same using python then so we can do python script we need three inputs in one in zero in one and in two and then we can connect for example this to this which will more or less mimic the same like the point coordinates so if we go inside python the basic template will provide us already with this point by by coordinates uh, element so the first thing we want to do is to read the inputs x y and z so input one input two and input sorry input zero input one and input two as x y and z and then we want to create a point so we create a new variable that we can we can call point and this one will be a point dot so as you can see immediately, um, when we call point, which is actually um, a class inside the library, we will go back to uh, what is a class um, a bit later in this course. But for now, just think about um, that the library is actually um, is actually a real library, and uh, the um, the class is actually a book in the library. And inside the book, we can find chapters. So we can access books importing a library, and we can access chapters of the book just using the dot notation. So when we choose the right book we want to use, we choose the chapter that we want to read. So if we want to use a point by coordinates, we just access the point book and then we want to use and read by coordinates as you already can see if you know exactly how the node is called outside the library we can address the same exact book inside the python script which will make things very easy so using the tab on the keyboard we can choose this one then we open the two parentheses and this uh, specific book is expecting from us exactly three different float numbers which in this case will be x y and z so just to make it easy uh, to read we gonna add plus five and plus five to the x and to the z so this point will be easy to see it the last thing we need to do is actually to let the point flow out from the node so our out is going to be equal to point let's save the changes and we can run the script so let's see if we have any of this issue here so the first issue is that um, we are trying to input an integer number and uh, point by coordinates is 
uh, expecting uh, an element of type float. And at the same time, we don't have any of them connected to the input one and input two. So all these things are managed by the code inside the point by coordinates node, but is not managed by our Python script. So if we want to let this work, we need to connect a zero to this one and to this one at least, which are the default value for this Y and for this Z managed already by this node. So we can run again, and now our point is working. So he's already casting in a proper way inside the Python script, converting this integer into a float number. But what we need to remember is that we don't have any default value inside here. So we need to connect something to the input. Otherwise, we have an error because the input one is not connected to anything, so is a known type for Python. Let's run it. So our point is located here now, and we can actually create as much point as we want. So we can try, for example, to change this Y, change again, Again and again, so you get the idea. So the same exact element, but just with a different uh, way of creating it. So what's the point of using the point by coordinates then? Well, the main idea is that now, as we can see it now, is not probably so so useful. But when it comes to create more complex geometries in only one script, then we can really see the powerful of that. So we can create loops of, cre of point creations. We can then uh, use this list of points, for example, to create some curves and some shapes, all of them within the same, uh, within the same script. So for now, it's just a, a very simple example of what we can achieve. And uh, uh, we will see how, uh, how to manage it better later. So this Python script actually is working also if we, um, if we provide a list of elements. So if you know the notation within the, um, within the code block, uh, we can have a starting element, then we can have a final element, and then we can have a step. So in this way, if we run this script, this will create a list of elements from 0 to 10 with a step of 1, or can be with a step of 0 0.5. Or if we use the dash notation, that means we, need, we can create, for example, five numbers between 0 and, uh, and 10. I'm going to use this 0 0.5. And then if we feed this into the point by coordinates, we're going to have a bunch of points running on the X. And if we feed this into the Python script, then we receive an error. So why we receive an error? We receive an error because the input in the zero is a list of elements, whereas our Python script is expecting only a single number. Actually, he wants to add a single number just to the uh, to five. We want to add five to the first number. So he's not able um, out of the box to manage the lists inside the Python script. So we need to manage that uh, using loops. So let's give a quick introduction to uh, the loops then. So if we go in Google and we search for for Python, the for loop is actually one of the most common um, loops we can have inside Python. So the for loop is actually the way to, um, to go through a list of element and uh, uh, 
and read each one of these element. Uh, so we can read each and single element within an array, uh, which is basically a list of, uh, of elements itself. So the notation, the syntax is to use for a name of a variable, which is actually the local variable for each cycle of the loop, and then define the range we want to address. So going back to, uh, to our script, if we go under our Python script, the way we want to address all the elements in the list is to have for, we can call it for, let's say, x points in x. So x is the list of elements and xp is the element at each cycle of this loop. So the first time the index 0 will be 0, the second time the index 1 will be 0 0.5, the third time will be 1, and so on. So once we create a for loop, then we use a tab to indent the code by one, uh, by one line. And using this, we can just use the same point creation. And instead of x, we can use xp. So, oops, where is this xp? So the first time it's going to be 0, 0, 0. The second time is going to be 0 0.5, 0, 0. The third time is going to be 1, 0, 0, and so far. So, so let's try to run now and save these changes and run it. What's the output? So the output is actually only the last one. And guess what? Guess why? So if we go back here, the first time we read the list, the first number is 0, the second number is 0 0.5, the third number is 1, and so on. But the variable we use is always the same. So once the first point is created, the second one is going to override the point location. And so the third one will do it. So the only point we are able to see is only the last one, which will override all the previous one. How we can deal with that? So we can deal with that just using an array of points, creating an array of points, and try to store each one of the single point as a new point in our list of points. How we define an empty list then? We can define an empty list just giving a name. We can give a name like points. I usually use a notation uh, with an abbreviation PTS or something like that, but you can call it points. Is equal to an empty array. So an empty array, you just can use uh, open and close square brackets. So this will uh, define a new array called points, and this array is going to be empty. So whenever we create a new point, after we create this new point, we add this point to the points list. And to do that, we can use the add functions, and we just provide the variable we want to add. So the first time creates the first point, and the first point is added to the points. The second time, the second point is created and is added to the same list. So we don't over we don't override the first one, but we just add a new point to the list. So when we create all the points and the loop is finished, we can output the points then. So we save this change, we run the script, and then we have all the points. So you can start to see some uh, basic functionality of Python, but still 
you don't understand why we need to use Python for uh, instead of just using the point by coordinates. I fully understand what you are feeling now, but just bear with me. This is going to be much more complicated later, but I just wanted you to focus now on the basics of Python because we use a lot lists. We're going to use a lot for loops to address elements, to cycle between lists, and we will use this through list of lists sometimes. So this is very a simple example, but it's going to be very clear for you uh, because we will use this a lot. So there are other types of loops, uh, but we will introduce the while loop a bit later uh, in this course. The last thing I want to introduce you uh, as a first, as a second lesson uh, and first lesson in Python are some conditions uh, that will drive our um, our selection of elements. So let's say we want to create only points if the x value is greater than or less than or equal to something. Well, how we can do this using the basic functionalities of, uh, of Dynamo? Well, we can create and we can use an if statement, for example, or we can use a code block to create that. So if statement where the test is that this value is, for example, greater than, so if this value is greater than, I don't know, let's say five, and this is the test, then the value is this one. So is actually the value from this list, otherwise is zero. So if we search in this list now, it's always zero and it becomes 5, 5.5 5 and 6 as soon as we reach the number 5. We can actually say that this one is null. So is null before and is the number after the 5. So if we create this one, it's going to create some of the points, but actually uh, the null value cannot Cast, be cast to double. Uh, so if we try to do it in this way, it's going to create some issue. So you can just start to understand that uh, it is not probably the best option. So let's see how we can do it uh, within the Python script then. So let's go into the Python. The statement if is working exactly the same. So if we do the if Python. So the if is uh, starting with the if statement, then there's a, uh, a condition, and then again the semicolon. So let's go back here. Inside our for loop, let's type enter. Let's type a tab to get uh, the code indented. And then we can say if xb is greater or equal than 5, then semicomma, we go one line below and we do an indentation of this. So remember, if we don't do a proper indentation, and we keep the things like this, for example, this element will be inside the if statement, but this element will be outside the if statement and still inside the for loop. But if we remove completely all the tabs, this element will be just out from the for loop 
and it will not even recognize that a point variable exists. Again, for now, probably is not really clear, but it will come become very clear later uh, during this course. So for now, just let's just try to do things in the proper way. So we want to have a loop into all the elements in the list provided as an X input. And for each one of them, we want to check if the value is greater or equal than five. If this statement is true, then we want to create a point with this x, y, and z value and add this point to the point list. Otherwise, which means else, we don't want to do anything. So we just continue. We can omit this else continue, but sometimes I just write it uh, to make it more clear. So let's see what's going to be the output of this then. Let's run it. As you can see, no error compared to this one. The code is much more clean compared to this one. And we only have the output of the element that we really need to, uh, to output from this Python script. So it can be even an input. Can be we can call base value and type this as an input and then instead of hard coding this value here we can say that this one is the base value we save the change we add a new one and then let's see this one is still zero and then we have a new one which is going to be five. And the result will be exactly the same. Oh, this can be six, can be changed, or can be even a number slider. Of course, we know that this one is not more than 10. And then we can do automatic one. So we can reduce this one or we can increase this one. And as soon as we increase, then the points will be reduced. Uh, let's remove this so we can see it. This one is 10. This one is zero. What happened? Uh, it's really strange. Oh, yeah, just because I don't have any more the list. Let's say 50 and 0 0.5. Let's run it. Let's go into automatic. Control B, and then we can play with this one, reducing, um, doing some stuff here. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy, pretty clean, and uh, uh, we can, we can really, we can really do some clever uh, selection about the points, uh, which is something that we really do a lot during uh, during this course. So based on some functions or based on some selection, we're going to extract some sub list of um, a more complex list and then try to filter this and output whatever we just need to output. So just to uh, recap what we did today, uh, we just introduced the CLR, the Common Language uh, Library. Uh, we just saw an add reference uh, as a protogeometry from the uh, from the from the libraries, which gives us the access to the design script geometry using the import star, which means that we uh, we want to import all of them. Uh, 
uh, we just had a look to how to define inputs, what is an array of inputs, uh, what kind of variable we have, uh, the float integer string and so on. We're going to see uh, more, uh, more of them um, later in this course. Uh, then we had a quick introduction on the for loop, how to identify a for loop. Um, there are different ways of identifying the ranges. Um, and again, we will, we will have a look into this. Uh, and then we had uh, a brief introduction on uh, the if statement to select some, uh, some element. So next time uh, we will focus more on how to import other libraries, uh, for example, the mathematical library, uh, and how to create more complex geometries using the, um, the geometry library. We will go then into some uh, more advanced creation and some more advanced functionality for Python, like creating methods and creating libraries of methods that you can reuse through your scripts or you can uh, deploy inside your company uh, to be used by uh, to be used by others. So let's keep in touch, and I will try to record the next lesson as quick as possible. So just to, uh, to give you um, as soon as possible the next lesson so you, you, you can catch up. Thank you and see you next time.